get more powerful, more actionable, better data on what you're targeting successfully and unsuccessfully on Amazon than ever before with Amazon's new targeting tab in their advertising API. Hi, my name is Matt Davis, and I'm the advertising director here at My Amazon Guy. And today I'm going to show you the power of Amazon's new targeting tab, really the best ways to use it, and in some ways, how it can even make you faster than the bulk sheets, the 2.0 video that we just covered last week. So with that, let's dive right in. So from the homepage, you go Amazon Seller Central, Advertising, Campaign Manager. All right, so from your homepage, you're going to go Advertising, Campaign Manager to get your advertising API. And then here's the targeting tab. Now, probably it's been out. It's not new, new. It's been out for about six or nine months now. Probably most of you have been able to hopefully play around with this. Um, so this is going to show us everything, everything we're targeting, um, where it is, what campaign, what ad group, and then some of the data, how it's doing, right? Um, auto targeting, manual targeting, sponsored display, sponsored brand, every type of targeting. Um, audience targeting, product, keyword, you name it, right? It's all in here. Um, so this is a really powerful tool, a really powerful way for us to get a sense of what's happening at the targeting level uh, at any point in the account. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons this is so powerful is I wanna point your attention to a couple new things. First of all, get really comfortable with this filter button. Um, and then this export button, this filter is, allow, is what's gonna allow you to chop up your, your data, right? So um, this is what it's gonna allow us to sort of piecemeal our data into bytes uh, the way we wanna use it, which is gonna be really important because now we have this thing called bulk actions where instead of doing bulk sheets like we showed you on the video last week, you can actually bulk action directly through this panel. Um, and the way to most quickly and efficiently do that is to use your filters to chop down which targets you want to impact all at once and then commit bulk actions. And we'll go through that really quickly today. The other point uh, I want to point your attention to here is the export filter. Um, this will automatically export similar to, uh, down to a CSV or Excel file, similar to an advertising search term report, right? That you would get from your reports tab. So you pull that up, right? If you were to download, it's got all your advertising data and then some top level um, targeting info, right? This is just for the day, obviously, um, which brings me to uh, my next thing here, which is check out your time windows. Um, it's always good to cycle your time windows anytime you're making mass changes to an account, right? Um, everybody's a little bit different. Some people like seven day, 30 day. Some people like seven day, 45 day. Some people like 14 day, 60 day. Uh, whatever it is, you need to just cycle your time windows so that you can see from a macro sense, how things are doing, and then over time, how things are changing. Quick example of where failing to do this might nip you in the butt is if you happen to have, you're doing an optimization and you see that, for example, a certain keyword target has 15 clicks and zero orders in the last seven days. You might be inclined to pause or negate it, or at the very least severely bid reduce it. If you fail to jump out to that 30 time window, you might see that you might fail to see that you know, that same target in the last 30 days has 60 clicks and is your top order getter, right? And so then that would be a different bit of information rather than, oh, this target isn't effective. Let's pause it or bid reduce it. It would be, what happened in the last seven days? Why is this so much less effective than it traditionally is, right? But you're going to miss diagnose that problem if you're not cycling time windows. So always do that, uh, whether or not you're bulk actioning, but especially when you're bulk actioning, because if you fail to do that, you may make massive miscalculations at scale, right? So just for the purposes of this exercise, we're gonna operate in a 30 day time window, but just be aware that that's important to sort of tally those back and forth. Okay, so the other last thing I wanna point your attention to before we start diving into this in earnest here is this top performers tab over here. And then the target's not delivering, right? This is really important. Now, one of the things I typically do when I filter and start using this information is one of the first things I'll do is I'll go in and say active status, and I want to see enabled, meaning what this means is if they're archived, I don't want to see it. If they're still uh, showing up on my current board, but they're paused, meaning they're not delivering, I also don't want to see it, right? So I want to apply that enabled, right? Give it a second to draw that data. You can see it's a fairly large account, which is why it's taking so long. Okay. So now I've got enabled, but so even within that, right, there's going to be status changes, right? So there's going to be paused status. Um, and I don't believe there's a way to filter for status. Uh, 
what? Let's see if we can do it with campaign and nope. Yeah, that's what I thought. It allows you to select specific campaigns and ad groups. Um, but so that's another th key thing to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> okay. So this is a good thing to look at, right? Because this will show you, um, and you notice when I clicked on that, what happened down here at the filter, right? It added an impressions equals zero, right? So this will show me all the places that I'm delivering, but not getting impressions, i.e. not getting traffic. Um, and that will happen anytime. So then that's the target not delivering. And then you've got your top performers, which allow you to sort at the three sort of broad levels, right? There's impressions, someone viewing your ad, there's a click, someone engaging with your ad, and there's a sale, someone converting my ad, right? So if I wanted to see, for example, where are my top impression getters? And right now I gotta get rid of this filter, right? So that's gonna show me where my top impression getters are. Uh, again, I gotta change this date range. You gotta be careful, right? Cause sometimes that data will jump around on you. Those filters will jump around. So you always wanna make sure that you're looking at the right set of data. Okay, so here's my top impression getters over the last 30 days. Now watch, if I apply this filter, see what it did here. It automatically changed my filter to from enabled to all but not archive, meaning now I'll catch even the paused campaigns and anything with impressions greater than zero. So then I can sort any one of these columns. You see currently it's sorted by impressions, but I can resort it by anything I want, any data I want, right? Um, I normally like to, another thing to check is to make sure you have all your columns selected. Um, some people like a sparser thing, a sparser data panel to me, every data point is a bit of information, a bit of insight. So I like them all um, to an extent. Um, you know, the, the, some of the newer stats are, are some of them have more value than others, but certainly all the traditional stats I like to see. Okay, so you've got your impressions. You can also change this widget and change it to clicks and orders. Um, and again, all of this, and any of this is exportable, right? You can always export this. Um, and that will give you, you can, from there, you can run pivot tables. From there, you can run p &Ls. From there, you can, you know, break it down to how much am I gaining or loss or losing by product? You can get really powerful from there, right? Because you can export this data based on your pre-selected filters. And then from there, it goes to an Excel spreadsheet where you can manipulate that data very effectively at scale in mass, right? So it's a really powerful tool. Um, and the visuals here, as you guys can see, it's quite a bit better than if I was just working with bulk, like if I was just doing macros, right? Using a bulk sheet. Um, it's quite a bit more visual and more sort of interactive, um, particularly if you're not a data person, this is probably not to make massive changes all up and down the account, but to spot check or to get a sense of what's happening at the targeting level from, you know, for looking at like 30,000 foot trends, this is probably a better place to do that than your macros, than your bulk options, okay? Um, so one thing I like to do is I always like to play with these filters myself. The top performer widget is nice, but I feel that you can be more powerful by selecting these yourself. So I'm going to go back to enabled because again, if it's not running right now, I really don't care. Um, I don't care about impressions right now. So there's three things that I would look at generally, right? So for starters, let's say I wanted to um, cut spend anywhere where I'm not, where I'm really not being successful, right? So let's say we've got enabled and let's go filter for orders that equal zero in the last 30 days, right? Give this data a chance to load. Okay, still sorting for impressions. I wanna sort now by clicks because I wanna see where are we getting the most engagement, i.e. spending the most money. And again, we're filtering for orders that equal zero. So this is places where we're getting traffic, engagement, but no orders in the last 30 days. Okay, here we are. Right, so you could very easily, another good one to, if you don't like clicks as much, because that's sort of the interaction, the individual interaction that shows you, but obviously every cost per click is different based on target. So you could also sort by spend, right? Where are my top spenders without a single dollar in return? Right? So that shows you how much you're spending. The reason I like clicks a little bit better is because that's showing me how much, how many opportunities, sort of how many bites at the apple, swings at the plate, whatever metaphor you want to use there, that I've had um, without a single successful hit, right? Without a single on base. Um, 
this is going to be a right a really powerful opportunity for me to see at scale. So I can see right here, right? Um, Glock holsters really don't do well for me for whatever reason. That's the, the Holstead brand underneath the Stephen Stevens Age of Sage, right? And you can see most of these are paused right now. Um, so let's see here. Let's see, I wanna go, but so let's say I wanted to take a bulk action, right? I could then grab these and take a bulk action. I could pause or archive them. I could adjust the bid, right? Which is, you gotta be careful with that because that's applying one bid across all of these different targets, right? Or I could say for each of them, I want to apply the suggested bid, which is the Amazon pre-suggested bid. Or I could export this and turn this into a bulk sheet, right? There's a lot of things that I could do here. So, but what I'm sensing, right? Again, really bulk sheets are the best, are still the better method for actioning at scale. But if I wanted to diagnose at scale, to me, this is a better tool, right? So just with a couple of quick filters here, which again, I can export this, right? So if I wanted to, create a report to my board of directors about, hey, here's what we're doing wrong or here's what we're doing right in the account, right? And here's the proof, the data proof. You could very quickly turn this into a pretty powerful, um, you can manipulate this data offline, right? Off Amazon rather, and turn this into a pretty powerful data presentation. What right now, what I'm seeing, right, is like anything that has to do with holster, Glock holster is not converting. Um, I would want to dig in to the specific reasons behind that. Um, the fact that I'm, I, you know, I'm a personal firearm owner. I would suspect that people who are searching for a certain type of holster are mostly searching for model number, meaning you're not just going to search for a Glock holster. You're going to search for a Glock 17 holster because your Glock 17 is going to have a different fit and therefore require a different holster than a Glock 21, right? Um, so that's my suspicion. I don't know that I would want to then go dig into additional data points, right? Maybe I would click into this. All right, let's go see what's happening with this guy, right? And now I click into that and it's bringing me to the campaign. I could go look at, hey, uh, what are we doing with our bid strategies? I could say, hey, what's going on with our ad groups, right? We've got 198 clicks and no orders. Are we bidding effectively, right? What's going on with the targeting? It's a, it's a broad match, okay? So maybe that is accounting for it. Um, Right, looks like we're bidding far too aggressive, right? So I might half this bid, right? Again, we've got 162 clicks and no orders. I would rather than piecemeal this, I would make changes at scale, right? Once I determine what my reason was, maybe I download a sheet and do a macro, right? Um, so I could go to my search term reports, right? Get rid of that filter. So here are my search term reports, right? I can break it down by clicks. Where are the clicks going? And see if there's anything I can glean about trends in that, right? Boom, now you have it, see? It's, it's, it's frustrating being right so often, let me tell you. It's not. Um, see, look at this, right? The search terms, the, i.e. what people are actually searching for, right? Look at that, Glock 21, Glock 19, Glock 48, Glock 23, Glock 22. Right, Glock 40, Glock 43X. Again, you're gonna need a certain kind of, of model specific holster to fit that weapon, right? So that's probably why those broad terms are not converting well, because that might not be delivering them the right ad for the right size holster. I would dig into that, right? But so that's one bit of information I gleaned from seriously two minutes of playing with these filters, right? All right, uh, the other thing I could do, right, is all right, let's see where I'm having orders, but I'm not really converting successfully. Let's try everything with, right, whatever, let's say my target A cost on this account, and those of you who watch this account regularly know, um, the target A cost on this account is 35. 35 is the gold number for this. So times two is 70, right? That means places where we're more than two X the target efficiency. And let's see where we're doing, what we're doing there, right? This is places we do have orders, but we're just not converting effectively. And I'm going to sort it again, each one of these columns with the exception of status, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, every other one of these columns can be sorted. So if I want to sort by ROAS or I want to sort by ACOS or I want to sort by spend or whatever, I can just click on it, right? 
Okay, <clears throat> so here's where we are the highest over the last 30 days in terms of conversion. Holster, holster for SIG. Let's see what this is, substitutes. Let's see if that's a, a Holstit brand as well. Because Stephen, I don't know if you guys know, it has a couple different brands, right? So there's Monster, there's Holstit. There is, oh yeah, see, that's a Monster brand. There is uh, uh, Sage, the, the Sage Sticks, um, Age of Sage, excuse me. So we've got a couple different brands under here. All right, so here's another thing I could action, right? So I could go down this list. And for those of you who caught that 48 minute snoozathon that I created last week on bulk sheets, right? The same type of action here, right? Look at all these places where we're over the ACOS mark. I could say, you know what? I'm gonna select all these guys, bulk action. I wanna adjust this bid down, right? See, and you can increase bids, you can set the bids. So let's do this, right? Decrease bids by 50%. Boom. And I just updated 55 bids, right? Everything that was over 2X, I just decreased by 50%. Um, Fernando might not like this, but I would argue that that's faster than the bulk sheets, right? Powerful, powerful way. Granted, it's a little bit more limited. You're not quite as flexible in terms of what you're updating in the bulk sheets. But the ability to see it, understand it, and action on it, I think is even faster here in the targeting API. Okay, so now the same way as we do for another optimization, let's flip the script. Let's go less than 30, right? Five points under, or even 25, 10 points under our target ACOS and see what that's doing. Aha, right? So we got a lot of stuff that's going and I'm going to sort, it looks like it already is pre-sorted by ACOS, right? And now because this one, I'm looking where I'm having more impact. Yes, ACOS is important. This means I'm converting at a high efficiency, but for the successful ones, I might even sort by orders or sales, right? Because I'm already setting this filter to guarantee that anything that doesn't convert efficiently is already sorted out, it's filtered out. But now on top of that, right? I want to see where I'm converting most often, right? So these guys, right? And I can see I'm pretty efficient, right? In a lot of these places. Let's see what my current bid is, bid 82 cents. Yeah, so really, I mean, even some of these need some updating too. So, right, so let's go because these guys are all winners. Let's go, and I don't wanna to get too drastic for the purposes of this um, exercise. You'd wanna not just update everything by one bulk number, but just to show you the power of this, I will probably go up by a more conservative number than I really would, just to make sure that I don't throw anything out of whack, right? So I'm gonna select all, and I'm gonna take a bulk action, and I'm gonna adjust the bid, and I'm going to increase the bid, and this time I'm gonna say, let's go up on everything by 25%. And I just updated 81 bits. So I just did an optimization for you there. And really most of it, let's be honest, was just me talking at you. The reality was if I didn't have you to blab at, I probably could have done this in under five minutes. That would have been a mass optimization at scale of a fairly large account. You're welcome, Amazon community. Again, my name is Matt Davis. I'm the advertising director here at My Amazon Guy. And for all the best tips and tricks on Amazon, managing your Amazon account, growing your Amazon account, managing your listings, managing your logistics, growing your ads, growing your sales, uh, reducing your costs, all those fun things. Go to Stephen Pope's Amazon channel, myamazonguy.com. Uh, check us out, book a coaching call, look at our YouTube channel. We have lots of great information to help you get better and more efficient at growing your e-com and Amazon channel. Thank you for your time and attention. Y'all have a great weekend.